What's going on YouTube? And welcome back Uncommon Sense fam. It's your boy Uncommon Sense here. Today's video is going to be yet another different. My man Barry over at Centralize issued this tag to me. Top 10, 10 out of 10 designer fragrances. Before we get started, I have to, 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 have to. Have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, have to give an honorable mention to a fragrance that I came across in my fragrance journey. My sister gave it to me as a birthday gift, maybe about a year or so ago, and that is Clean Love Grafts. It's an Eau de Parfum. This one smells very clean. Hence the name. Clean. But it also smells like spearmint, mint. And there's a grassy accord in here. Hence the name Love Grass. Beautiful fragrance on my skin. I've had compliments from neighbors, men, women, you name it. If you have not checked out this one, make sure you check out Clean Love Grass. And that's our honorable mention for today. We're about to get into this thing. Let's go. Every single day. Number 10 spot, Prada Luna Rasa. Dope atomizer. Beautiful smell too. It's It's got a mint note. And again, I'm kind of partial to mint. I love the bottle. So only because it reminds me of, my dad used to have a flask that looked almost exactly like this. For me, is a go-to for an interview fragrance. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Anytime I've worn this to an event, to an interview, anything like that, I'm not gonna say this is my lucky charm, but I will tell you this. Two things have happened. I've either gotten the opportunity and got the opportunity for a better offer than I was expecting. So, number 10 spot goes to Prada Luna Rasa, the original, the OG. Coming in at number nine, we got Kenneth Cole Black Bold. Kenneth Cole Black Bold is an Eau de Parfum. I showed up to my mom's place and she handed me this. I was blown away for two reasons. One, I hadn't heard much about it. Two, the scent on this one, decent atomizer. Out of this world. There's some depth and complexity in this one. It's very green and aquatic at the same time. It is an absolute banger. I've not smelled anything like this, but if I had to give the scent category, it's kind of along the lines of Blue de Chanel, but not quite. It's a lot more green and has a shower gel kind of vibe. Don't take that to mean cheap because that's not what I'm getting at. It's borderline a masterpiece. I can't get enough of this one. Not only was it a gift, which I cherish from my lovely mother, this one is a banger. Rolling on up to the number eight spot, we got Balmain on Eau de Toilette. I first got put on when I saw it available on my calendar for Scentbox. I was with it. When I tell you guys it's sweet, it's fresh, and I really dig it. That is a beautiful bottle. That deep blue, that thick, heavy glass, the decorations, it's very marine-like, official. The scent on this one, that's what you want to know about. Good atomizer. I will say this. The opening on this one is very acidic. If you can get past that to get into top notes, which freshly come right out behind that, it is sweet, but it's fresh. So it kind of has that bubblegummy kind of sweetness like Invictus, but this one leans a little differently. As it develops, the sweetness and it kind of gives way to some woody notes, which I thoroughly enjoy. If I had to say something that this reminds me of, it smells like Mont Blanc Emblem, but this one goes in a slightly different direction than Mont Blanc Emblem. The woody notes in this one make more of an appearance and kind of stay a little bit more dominant throughout the fragrance. Coming on up to the number seven spot, we got for him, Narcisa Rodriguez, Blue Noir. This is an Eau de Toilette concentration and bam. Beautiful bottle. Heavy glass with the inside painted that deep navy blue. Very 
refined atomizer and the scent it smells amazing it is not a projection monster however it sits much closer to the skin this one is musky but it's musky done right this one's been compared to scent wise here there are mace and to my nose, this one is kind of similar to another one I have on my fragrance collection, the Oscar de la Renta Gentleman. This one also kind of reminds me of Givenchy's Blue Label. If you guys haven't smelled that, it's in that similar vein. Sits close, but it's very sexy. Vetiver. Coming up to the number six spot, Azaro. Wanted. The OG. This one just does everything I need it to do. It's sweet. It's fresh. It's got a nice atomizer. When I tell you it is a beast at projection on my skin and it is a beast at longevity on my skin. It's sweet, it's fresh, it's woody, it's aromatic too. This needs to be on the body. Get this on some skin that's properly moisturized, clean, be clean. <laughs> that's first and foremost. Coming in at number five. Jean-Paul Gaultier Autremont is billed as an eau de toilette intense. So it's not quite an eau de parfum, but it's not just an eau de toilette. The performance on this one is crazy. Beast. I love this fragrance. It is sweet, and a lot of folks will knock it for that. I want them. Clean, fresh, and sexy. So I don't have a problem with sweet fragrances. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Great atomizer. Beautiful scent. That juicy pear scent. That's just super duper sweet and beautiful kind of people call it bubble gum cotton candy whatever i've worn this in the heat in chicago in july and i wore this outside and i got stopped by several people that kept asking me what do you have on that cologne you got on smells so good it was kids outside saying oh smells good okay? coming in at number four my man time for gray vetiver oh the toilet concentration scent on this one that sparkling Beautiful, classy, citric vetiver. I don't think it's a vetiver in the game that's putting Tom Ford's great vetiver or the toilet to shame. I haven't found one yet that's slaying this one. And that's just what it is. I love this fragrance. And it's just suitable for a lot of different events. Get an empty space on the arm. Because just in the air, don't do this no justice. Ugh. Imagine for a moment, you got a glass of ginger ale, you just poured it. Don't you know when the bubbles are kind of popping up and the fizz has risen up more than liquid has? This one kind of has that type of vibe to it. This one is refined and it is just, it's class in a glass. I'm not going to even lie to y'all. This is one of my favorites. This is also one of my favorite fragrance houses. You've probably heard like I've heard, but if you haven't, let me put you on. This one has been discontinued. So, I'm in search of a replacement vetiver fragrance that mirrors the scent and performance of this one if you guys have any affordable suggestions make sure you drop them in the comments below i'd love to hear what you guys think and to be honest with you guys i'm in the midst of getting a video out there for tom for a great vetiver i've not reviewed this one on my channel yet but these tags keep coming at me man and so i gotta rise to the occasion you guys are all keeping me on my toes and i love you guys for that i really appreciate all the love and attention you guys have been showing me man keeping this really feeling like a community and like a family that is something that I didn't know that I was really seeking, but I really appreciate the camaraderie and the ability to come together with you guys to not only share our experience with fragrances, but to learn from each other. So I got to let you guys know, I really appreciate all the love you guys have shown me. I support and rep you guys to the fullest. Now rolling up to the number three spot, we got Christian Dior Sauvage. Oh, they toilet. It was a must have to the point my sister friend bought it for me and gave it to me because I talked about it so much. I just hadn't purchased it yet. I cannot get enough of this one. This is such a beautiful fragrance. I love this one. It's sweet. It's ozonic. It's woody. It's aromatic. And Dior Sauvage, I know a lot of people rock with this one. This is on everybody's top 10 list. I couldn't deny it. I tried my hardest to shuffle my list around so I wasn't presenting the same things everybody else is. Dior got it right. It may not be niche, but it is designer done right. The number two spot on my designer top 10, 10 out of 10 fragrance list, we got Carolina Herrera, Chic for Men. Now, this actually made the number one spot on my top 10 for men's spring 2020 list 
it has a watermelon note and I actually love watermelon. My only complaint about this one is the cap doesn't click into place. I don't know if I just popped it off on all too many times, whatever. But the scent on this one is amazing. This one actually smells like Ed Hardy's Love and Luck amped up two levels. In addition, that atomizer is really nice. In addition to all the things I just said just now, this one has the nerve to have great performance. I got roughly seven and a half to eight hours of performance off this one alone. It projects roughly maybe about two hours and it's probably at a one fit radius. Then it becomes much more of a skin set that kind of perks up throughout your wearing. Just when you've thought about that it's gone, you'll get a whiff of it out of absolutely nowhere. I don't have to spray heavy with this one either. This one smells good, it performs great, it's affordable. I actually really dig the house of Carolina Herrera as well. We've arrived. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me tonight. And I appreciate that. One of my favorite fragrances in my entire collection, and that's gonna be Bulgari Man in Black Essence. This bottle is beautiful. Not only is the bottle beautiful, the scent inside is beautiful. Great atomizer. Do you hear me? Great. Let's find a spot, empty spot, to spray this on. This one's the Eau de Parfum, too. Oh my God, this one just smells so good. It's dark, it's mysterious. It is a little bit woody, but it is boozy and leathery at the same time. When I got my scent box subscription and this came, I remember spraying a little bit and went about my day. Maybe 10 or so hours passed and I could still smell this fragrance on my skin. I actually feel like this one can give Tom Ford's Ombre Leather a run for its money. They're in slightly different lanes. However, this one lasts and smells a freaking amazing. There's a there's something in here though that kind of smells like licorice. It's sweet, but it's still dark. Maybe anise. That's probably what it is. I need to look at the notes to be sure. I've not done a review on this one yet, but this one, <laughs> this one just meets my needs. It checks all my boxes. It's one of the best fragrances that I have in my collection. It is indeed a top 10, 10 out of 10. I can't ask any more from this fragrance, from the bottle, the presentation, the performance, the smell. It's everything that I need. Again, I appreciate you, Barry at Centralized for issuing the challenge. I rose to the occasion. I humbly accept challenges. I thank you guys for tuning in with me and sticking around and being a part of my fragrance journey. Give me feedback on this list. Let me know any of these fragrances that you haven't smelled, any of these fragrances that you have smelled. We may be able to get you a decant so that you can experience some of my uncommon scents. I'm out. Till later.